Adventure's so close, you can reach out and touch it. We are going for an ATV adventure that is close quarters, but you won't believe where when we tell you. Then join me, Stephen Human, as I set my sights on new destinations to explore. I'm on the Bridger Jack Trail with an invitation to you and your family to give it a try. What can you expect out here on the border of Canyonlands? You don't have to wait long to find out. After that, Reese Stein follows the birds to the Midwest. Own the outdoors now on At Your Leisure. And I'm Chad Booth, and we are bringing you the show today from the Tickaboo Resort. Well, actually, at this particular moment, we are on Lake Powell, but our destination today is the Tickaboo Resort just outside of Bullfrog in the very western tip of Garfield County, where it meets Lake Powell. Most people think about this part of the state, and all they think about is Lake Powell. They just drive past everything to get here. And while this is part of the fun, from kayaking to water skiing to fishing, most people don't realize that this is a Moab grade ATV and Jeep destination place, plus a little bit of mountain biking and fat tire biking. We're going to try and get it all in today. So you want to know what you can do? Just watch. We are in Lost Eden Canyon on Lake Powell in the adventurous state of Utah. What I like about Southern Utah is just that whatever you wake up and want to do that morning, it's right there for you. you it doesn't matter. You want to get on the water, you want to go fishing, you want to go boating, you want to go skiing, you want to go ride a mountain bike, you want to go hiking, you want to go see some bighorn sheep, you want to go see the buffalo in the Henry Mountains, it doesn't matter. Whatever you want to do, it's here. You can do it. Whenever we say Lake Powell or we're on Lake Powell, he actually starts tearing up. <laughs> There's something primal in me about taking off from this marina out onto the lake because there's such a large block of my life that's tied to this lake. I love it. If you rented a pontoon boat, you could take kayaks with you and you could take the uh, fat tire or electronic bikes. There are trails that are accessible off of the lake and you can hop on uh, any one of them and, and take those things and do it with you. But right now we are trying to find the pontoon boat that has our kayak so we can hop out and enjoy this water. This is the first sign of spring. Look at that pasty white flesh. <laughs> See ya! <laughs> first one back to Bullfrog wins the prize. You could get out there and literally within 10 minutes be all by yourself. The whole adventure center that we're designing is uh, gonna be planned to have ATV off-road trips, uh, canyoneering, hiking trips. Uh, the hiking trips will be focused on historical and ecological points of view. And we're gonna be doing uh, guided ATVs or you can just come and rent one and go out on your own. We have maps that you can take out and you can enjoy the, the whole part of the state, uh, the southern part of the state with or without a guide. <laughs> <laughs> what are you? you? Whoa! Woo! Hey, that was beautiful! Are you winded? You popped a wheelie! I did. <laughs> now, you might think after all this exercise, you're going, yeah, for an old guy, he's not huffing and puffing, but I cheated. I've got an electric bike. <laughs> These oh, are an so An electric awesome. fat tire, isn't this neat? Yeah, they're really cool. So this I mean, is one of did. the other things you can rent here. Absolutely. Like you said, you just ride it right out of the lobby and you're on a trail. That's true. So. Right now we're gonna shift gears from all the fun stuff that you can do here and all the adventure you can have at Tickaboo to an adventure far away with Steve Human. Well, it isn't every day that you get to ride in a place as epic as this, but that's where we find ourselves today. Hey everybody, I'm Steve Human. 
and I want to take you on a little bit different type of ride today. Generally, when we go out on ATVs and UTVs, we go to places that we're already familiar with. Well, I want to challenge you to stop doing that, and that's what I've decided to do today. I've never been here before. This is Bridger Jack Trail, the little-known area just outside of Canyonlands National Park. It is spectacular, and I want to show you every inch of it today. Pop culture images of the Old West often feature bluffs of crimson stone jutting up from the ground and kissing the blue sky with their plateaued pinnacles. Here along Highway 211, every mile takes you closer to Canyonlands National Park and the larger-than-life landscape that acts as almost the quintessential western terrain. Right on its doorstep, a road branches off toward the south, taking in sights every bit as impressive as what you'll find in the park. But here, the way is open to exploration that will change the way you understand this section of Utah and the people you bring with you. Driving through it with lots of sagebrush to the side, getting to uh, smell a little bit of the sagebrush. It's been great on the, on the nose or your sensory, and then uh, visually it's just real quiet and peaceful, aside from the uh, animals that you bring with you. For Will Carpenter, those animals are his teenage children. Today, Will, his son Andrew, and daughter Emma have left their home in Denver to discover new adventures in the wilds of Utah. What they found is the Bridger Jack Trail, a dirt ribbon that hugs the canyon walls as it blazes along the valley floor toward a world of red rock and historic potential. This is a really cool landscape. You know, you have your plateau and like all your cliffs and stuff. And then you can look over and there's like another mountain in just a different landscape. It's a really cool vista. The Bridger Jack Trail itself is an easy ride, basically a flat dirt road that takes you out into the valley. But occasionally there are side routes that go right up to the bluffs. We took one that ran to the base of one of the spires and became the perfect excuse to get out and hike around. There's a cave up there, we explored that, it was pretty cool. And then there's a bunch of like rocks that are standing up, you know, walk around them, see what they are, see how they got there, wonder why they got there. Getting out and being able to tromp around in some pinion trees and being able to see some hard rock and now we're just tromping around with kids. It's nice to not be plugged in so much. Being able to walk around without the kids having to worry about checking their phones, making sure their emails or their Facebooks or Snapchats are caught up. It's been very nice to be able to do something unplugged, as it were. The great thing about landscapes like this one is that they act almost like a lens, forcing us to focus not on our normal day-to-day -day preoccupations, but on the things that are most important. It's very inspiring for me to see my own son being able to drive along at, at speeds in a recreational vehicle and uh, him being able to experience that for the first time, being excited about the, the thrill of going fast, of course, which all guys and girls like to do as well, teenagers in general, and enjoying themselves with the little wind in your hair and beautiful weather. It's exciting for me to see my kids enjoying themselves. Oh, it's great. You're in the middle of nowhere. You know, you can mess with them as much as you want, but at the end, you're still a family, so. Not every day can be like this one, but it's days like this that make all the others worthwhile. And it doesn't matter how old or young you are. Coolest thing I ever did, you know. The grins on my, uh, on my two kids' faces as they were running about and driving recreational vehicles, being some of the wildlife, aside from the uh, birds and the bees that we're seeing, we're also seeing the, our friends and people get to hang out with. It, it's, it's been very nice. You see, it isn't just the landscape that makes a trip memorable. It's the people that you bring with you. Bridger Jack is amazing. You need to come out here. It's pretty easy to find. You just head north on Highway 191 out of Monticello. Then you head west on Highway 211, which is toward Canyonlands. After about 25 miles, you'll see the trailhead. Now, you'll pass Newspaper Rock. That's a great place to stop and check out because it's absolutely beautiful. Just past that, there's another trailhead that's a hiking trailhead. And then about three or four miles down the road, you'll come upon this one. There's a nice bathroom there. And once you stop here, you can unload. There's actually water crossing right as you get in there. It's really, really great. And if you're paying attention, you'll be able to find it pretty easily. Well, for At Your Leisure, I'm Stephen Human. We need to take a commercial break. We'll be back with our product review. In 1946, Ray City started a business built on exploration and family. He made his customers a promise that they would always find a friend when they walked into a dealership with the name Ray City. Now, 70 years later, that promise is fulfilled every day. We're still all about exploration and family. 70 years is a long time, but we are just getting started. 
come in and celebrate our huge anniversary sale. Ray City RV off Riverdale Road in Roy, serving your family since 1946. The instructions are simple. Sign up now to win this Polaris Razor 4 900, courtesy of At Your Leisure, Weller Recreation in Camas, Stebbins Recreation in Tooele, and Triple S Polaris in Roy. Your family can drive away with this Razor now for free. Sign up at AYLTV.com, on Facebook, or at any of the dealerships, and this could be yours. The giveaway ends on April 18th, so don't wait. Watch At Your Leisure every weekend right here on ABC4, good for Utah. place that is beyond words. There is nothing to be said, except take your time in Bryce Canyon country. Introducing the new Can-Am Spider F3. With a cruising riding position and the most advanced vehicle stability system in the industry, you'll ride with a feeling of complete freedom and confidence. Visit your K&M Spider dealer and test drive one today. The new Spider F3. Riding has evolved. Well, welcome back to At Your Leisure. We're out here at Stedman's in Tooele and we've got three aces to show you. Instead of doing a single product review, we've brought these three machines together. We're going to do them all at once so you can kind of see the difference between them. Well, I'm out here with Dave Stedman, and these aces, they all look like they're a whole heck of a lot of fun. And they look exactly the same, but they're really not, are they? Oh, they're not even close to the same. They have uh, three different size motors, 325, 570, and 900. You just got a different size motor for every adventure. You know, you want to go fast, you just want to crawl. That one will get it along just great in the hills. It has low range to get you where you need to when you're slow and works great. But if you want a little more power, you just step up to 570. And if you want a lot of power, you go to the 900. And that's, uh, that'll definitely cure your adrenaline for uh, the your need, need for, for some speed. horsepower. <laughs> exactly. So you got the 900 here, you got lots of power. It comes with doors, power steering, you got aluminum wheels. I mean, it's pretty set up to go out and have a great time. And then you also have the 570 model, which is You've got a couple versions of this, right? Well, your 570 comes in an SP, which is basically the same as the 900. It's got the power steering, the doors, and all the stuff on it. Gains the horsepower, you get a, quite a bit more motor. You don't have to push it quite as hard. And then the regular one that's not the SP, it gets net doors like the 325 over here. So if you get the SP, it's a little bit more loaded. Yes. And then you get to the 325, which is a pretty much just a base machine. It's a base machine. Sounds like 325 motor's not gotten enough horsepower to do the job, but it really does work a lot better than it sounds like it should. A lot of times you're not going real fast in the hills. The roads are rough, a lot of corners, trails of this and that. So it, it'll do the job, it'll do it great. So Dave, why would somebody want an Ace over a side-by-side -side machine? Well, the biggest thing we're seeing about the Ace is you got a lot of husband and wives and the wives are as aggressive as the husband is sometimes. And or sometimes more, more exactly. <laughs> and she don't want to sit passenger. So now you have a steering wheel unit that you sit in like the side-by-side. -side. You don't have the neck problems that you would, you're steering with here, so you don't have shoulder issues. They're a lot more comfortable, but now you can both drive instead of having to sit passenger with each other. So Dave, people can come out here to Tooele and check out Stedman's. You've got all these razors as well as these aces to choose from, and they can really find the machine that's right for them. Oh, you know, we got something for everybody and everything. Honda, Yamaha, Polaris, we got them all. That's right, get out here to Stedman's, but right now we need to get to commercial break. I'm Chris Haller, Utah Division of Parks and Recreation Off-Highway Vehicle Program Coordinator. 
And today we're here to talk about how you can protect your brain. A couple key things when selecting a helmet is to make sure that it's DOT approved and that you check the expiration date. Yes, helmets do expire. Typical expiration date is between five and seven years. Visit our website at ohv.utah.gov for more helmet information. Utah State Parks, adventures for everyone. Let's be honest, you don't know much about Beaver County. Well, let me tell you about it. It's the birthplace of outlaw Butch Cassidy and adventure Philo T. Farnsworth. Some of the best skiing in Utah is at Eagle Point. You've got camping, Canyon Breeze Golf Course, Crusher and the Tushers, Beaver Territorial Courthouse, Snowmobiling, Renewable Energy, Pioneer Car Show, Squeaky Cheese, Ghost Town to Explore, Best Water in the Country, Paiute ATV Trails, Old Frisco Kills, Horse Race, Hunting, Fishing, and it's a good place to live. Beaver County, mountains of fun. I could tell you more, but why don't you come and see it for yourself? The Utah Farm Bureau has always been there to fight for the needs of its members. With discount programs on items ranging from vehicles and ATVs to health and wellness. The membership fees aren't big, but the results are. We've been around since 1916, and we're not leaving anytime soon. Utah Farm Bureau. We work for those who work to feed the world. Got a ton of room over here, Senator. Well, welcome back to At Your Leisure. We are in a little place called the Narrows, just outside of Kickapoo, on an ATV adventure. Sorry, the no it's a little noisy because <laughs> the motor's echoing. You know what? It's a good thing that the Kickapoo Lodge does not charge for the fun factor because I'd be broke right now. <laughs> we are having so much fun on this ATV trail out here. And you just walk out of the lodge and you jump in your ATV and you're here in like 20 minutes. It's, it's just the Catholic guilt has, has really kicked in because I'm having way too much fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of fun to be had at the Tickaboo Resort. You ought to take a tour because we just had a blast this weekend. Check it out what else they have. So Tickaboo Resort is, uh, is an oasis in uh, southwestern uh, Utah and it's a pet friendly resort too. But Tickaboo Resort has 74 lodge rooms and they are uh, equipped with king size beds and queen size beds, two queens or a king. They're spaciously appointed, it's very beautiful rooms. We have a pool, we have a restaurant right behind us, Moki's Restaurant, and we have an adventure center just off of the side of Moki's, and that's where we house all of our adventure activities. Well, I love this job here in, uh, at Tickaboo because this is, this is one big backyard for me. This is anything I want to do at any time of the day, at any season of the year, there is something here to do. And that's exactly what I'm looking for and that's what I think all of our customers are looking for. Whether they want to get down there on the lake or they want to go out here and play in the backyard, there's something here for everyone from three years old to 83 years old. Whatever you want, we have it right here. TV every single day if I had this weather. I mean, this is like so ideal, it's perfect. This summertime, yeah, you want to be on the water, but in the spring and in the fall, this is the place to be. Because look, it's just perfect. And you're still getting your vitamin D from all the sunshine. As you can see, the possibilities are endless in Tickaboo. And so as you can see, I'm trying to get some sun on my legs. I saw you folks earlier when we were out on the boat looking at my pasty white winter legs. So I'm taking a minute at the pool to get a little sun on them. Do you really, do you really work on an outdoor adventure show? <laughs> yes, I, I've been snowmobiling all winter. How's that? Yeah, all right. Well, right now it's time for us to turn our attention to Reese Stein. Obviously brings us some of the best stories from around the world. This week is no exception. Reese is on the Express. I'm Reese Stein, at your leisure in North Platte, Nebraska, and you hear that? Boy, that's hundreds, maybe thousands of sandhill cranes in what is one of America's great wildlife spectacles. It's a continuous, rolling, rattling, gargling bugle call as the sedge of sandhill cranes feed in the stubble fields along the Platte River of central Nebraska. It's beyond words, I think. 
you have to be here to actually experience the the noise what the sandhill cranes make. Between late February and mid-April, nearly half a million sandhill cranes will congregate along a narrow 100-mile stretch of river between North Platte and Grand Island, Nebraska. This tight funnel is the last remaining usable rest stop along the Platte River on their arduous journey from breeding grounds in Mexico, southern New Mexico and Texas to their summer home in the Canadian Arctic, Alaska, even across the Bering Strait into Siberia. It's comparable to the wildebeest migration we witnessed two years ago in Africa, or maybe even the bigger version of the concentration of snow geese near Delta in western Utah. This place is a photographer's paradise. How long is your lens? It's a 250. You getting some, getting right in on them? I uh, wish I had a lot longer lens. <laughs> But even with an average power zoom, the photos are spectacular. Sandhill cranes are big, up to four feet tall, six foot wingspan, with a distinctive red spot on their forehead. Sandhills feed in the fields, often close to roads, and the car makes for a perfect blind. This is an unbelievable experience. I've never seen so many of these birds, and, and the sound is um, unbelievable too. A farmer and his dog let us use his silos as a blind to get even closer. More than 80% of the world's sandhill crane population converge on this critical sliver of habitat in America's central flyway. They rest and refuel on waste grain crops, mostly stubble corn, which accounts for 90% of their diet. Cranes are omnivorous and will also eat bugs, rodents, and mice, but it's the corn that fattens them up. Here they will gain nearly 10% of their body fat necessary for the thousands of miles they will journey north. Often the birds will engage in their unique courting dance, even though the mating season is past. Surprisingly, we share this site with just one other car. We have a pair of nesting sand hills on our property up from Minnesota. And coming down here has always been on our bucket list to make the trip down here to see the migration. and. It's unbelievable. It's just the sight to see so many birds like this. It's just spectacular. At sunset, the birds leave the fields. After dark, they become vulnerable to predators, so it's time to seek a safer spot for the night. Pinned against the blazing western sky, the picture becomes even more spectacular. In seemingly endless waves, the flocks head for the security of the Platte River. Twilight is the best time to view the birds. And this is the next best sunrise. The birds spend the night on the sandbars and in the shallows of the Platte. As morning dawns, they leave in groups small and large and head back to the fields to stock up. The fossil record says sandhill cranes have been doing this or their prehistoric ancestors have been doing this here for 10,000 years since the last ice age pulled back, carving out the meandering Platte River Valley. The river corridor has long served as a major conduit, not just for birds, but for the pioneers on the Oregon and Mormon trails, and the railroad, and Interstate 80. I love being here. I'm really surprised at how beautiful it is. Not only the cranes, which are wonderful, but the country itself at twilight is just a treat to see. Reese Stein at your leisure on the Platte River in Nebraska. If you look up epic in the dictionary, it's defined as heroic, majestic, or impressively great. Here in Kane County, Utah, we don't need a dictionary to tell us that. We live it every day. Stop reading about life and start experiencing it in Kane County. ATV adventures, Jeep excursions, hike a world where the Old West was yesterday and tomorrow is just over the horizon. Kane County, Utah, where epic is more than just a word, it's our way of life. Family time, friend time, your time. You've been thinking about getting a machine, but which one is right for you? An ATV, side-by-side, -side, or dirt bike? 
Stedman's Recreation has Utah's largest selection of Honda, Polaris, Yamaha, and Beta machines. See them all at Stedman's Recreation in Tooele. Need a tune-up, new tires, or want a winch? Stedman's Service Department can help. Stedman's Recreation in Tooele. You may think it's 300 miles out here, but remember, it's only 30 miles back. There's a little place on a Utah map Where I was raised, where my heart's at Where the sagebrush grows wild and high And the stars come out at night In the basin with the youth reservation, skin starvation, that Duchesne County life. Welcome back to At Your Leisure. After a good hard day of riding ATVs, there's nothing like sitting down to good junk food, I mean good high quality comfort food like a pizza. And this is supposed to be the best pizza oven in Southern Utah, serving the best pizza in Southern Utah. Is it ready yet? Let's get it going. All right. While we're slicing, let's go dicing. Let's take a look at this week's contest winner. Here's Steve Human. Thanks, Chad. This week, we have a Facebook winner. Steven Smith posted this photo of his sticker on Facebook. You can see it right there on his dirt bike. Congratulations. You are the winner of a Camp Chef stove. Call us at 801-947-8888 to claim your prize. And for the rest of you, get your stickers at any AYL sponsor. And if they don't have any more, make sure you let them know they need to get you some. Now, for those of you who didn't win today, the big prize is still ahead. And this is your last weekend to sign up to win. It's the Razor 4 900 giveaway from AYL, Weller Recreation in Camas, Stebbins Recreation in Tooele, and Triple S Polaris in Roy. You can sign up now on Facebook or at our website. And if you share one of our Facebook posts today or tomorrow, you'll get five extra entries into the contest. You can also still go into the dealers and sign up in person and get five more entries. Monday, April 18th is the last day to sign up, so we're getting right down to the wire on this. Your family will love taking out their new Razor 900, so sign up because someone is going home with this machine, and it might as well be you. We'll be announcing the winner next week. Now back to Chad and Rhea. All right, Chad, where is the pizza? Until then, let's take a look at next week's show. What happens when you replace horses with horsepower at the local rodeo? A lot of muddy fun and four-wheel thrills. Terry Wood will take a look at why more and more events are adding ATV rodeos to their lineup. Then we'll set out toward adventure in Tooele, Utah, with retailers, government officials, and explorers to find out what is so special about this area. Looks like next week's show is going to be a great one. Oh, and it looks like this week's pizza is going to be a great one. Check this out. Th this week, Yummy. I'm saying right now. <laughs> well, listen, thanks so much for joining us on At Your Leisure today. Remember, it's the Tickaboo Resort, and they've earned that title of resort, and it really holds true. This is a great place to go for one, two, three, five, even a week. You could make this your base camp for adventure. It really is. It's just, I can't wait to come back. I can't wait to eat the pizza. So until next time, remember, there is adventure around every bend, but you've got to get out to make your own adventure. On Ed's Your Leisure. See you next week. Come on, eat, 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 eat. Far away with Steve Human. I was hoping you knew what the story I was. Forgot. Spectacular is called Bridger Jack, and I want you to blah, 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 blah. crap. I knew halfway through I wasn't gonna make it. You see, it isn't just the locale that makes a that makes a memory memorable. <laughs> uh, earn up to its crap. Hi, I'm Chad Booth from At Your Leisure. I hope you just enjoyed the YouTube video that you just watched. Now. Remember, we come up with new videos like this every single week, so you might want to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you never miss a single story that we have out. Now, you can also share us with all of your friends on social media. Here's how to do it right here, and that way they can have fun too. If you want detailed information, we of course have our website, AYLTV.com, and from there, you can find out which television stations we broadcast on, so you never have to spend a day without your fix of family-oriented outdoor recreation adventure. Plus, don't forget, we have really cool contests.